Just a note for moving forward, as we look at the first reading, we're beginning uh, the, the letter to the Galatians. Now, most of St. Paul's letters have a formula. He starts, who he is, Paul, an apostle of Christ or whatever, to whomever he's speaking to, to the church of Philippi, to the church in Corinth, to Galatians, to Timothy, whatever, whatever it may be. And then, usually there's grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I give thanks to Almighty God for all these things, but not... Not in Galatians. He says who he is. He says who he's speaking to. And then he gets to the nub of what he wants to talk about. He skips over the grace and peace and skips over the thanks be to God. He says, I am amazed that you are so quickly forsaking the one who... You can tell he's got like this driving force. The whole letter to the Galatians is really focused on how they have given up the gospel of Christ. Meaning the gift of Christ's salvation by his death on the cross and rising again and saying okay we have to go back to the works of the law not meaning that you know they they're not supposed to you know not steal and not lie and those things but rather circumcision and the food rights and other things which the council of jerusalem says you don't have to follow so saint paul is getting at them and saying no that's not the way so as we listen to the galatians over the next several days that keep that in mind that that is where St. Paul is talking to them this is the context of everything so getting into the gospel and today's feast today is the feast of St. Faustina Kowalska how she um, over in the 1930s had these visions and revelations of Christ revealing to her the divine mercy of Almighty God and how she then was to be the scribe, the, the secretary of divine mercy, sharing with the world this gift of mercy. And this gift of mercy, of course, is God pouring out his mercy upon us. Jesus, I trust in you. That great confidence in God then pours out his mercy upon us. That we're able to receive, no matter how sinful we are, God's mercy. In fact, the more sinful we are, the more right we have to God's mercy. But, as we heard in the gospel today, it isn't just about receiving God's mercy, it's also about giving God's mercy to those around us. What, is, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? How do you read it? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Now, in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, when Jesus is asked what it is, he states these things, and he says, the second is like the first. Loving neighbor is like, is akin to, is one with loving God, the Father. And so, we look and we see these things are connected. And Jesus says to St. Faustina, I'm giving you three ways of exercising mercy toward your neighbor. Three ways. So this is something we need to pay attention to. The first, by deed. The second, by word. The third, by prayer. In these three degrees is contained the fullness of mercy. It is an unquestionable proof of love for me. Let me say this again. Our acts of mercy are an unquestionable proof of love for me. By this means, a soul glorifies and pays reverence to my mercy. So, not only are we to worship God's mercy as such and to receive God's mercy, we show our respect and our reverence and glorify God's mercy by then being merciful to others. Indeed, in word and in prayer. In another place, uh, he says, many souls are often worried because they do not have the material means with which to carry out an act of mercy. Yet spiritual mercy, which requires neither permissions nor storehouses, is much more meritorious and is within the grasp of every soul. If a soul does not exercise mercy somehow or other, it will not obtain my mercy on the day of judgment. Oh, if only souls knew how to gather eternal treasures for themselves, they would not be judged, for they would forestall my judgment with their mercy. 
Our mercy forestalls God's judgment on us. He calls us to act in mercy towards others, in deeds, in words, in prayer. What does this look like? Well, you can check out the bulletin and see the acts of mercy that, we, that are the corporal and the spiritual works of mercy. How we reach out in prayers, how we reach out in instructing, how we reach out in admonishing, how we reach out to those who are hungry, to those who are thirsty, to those who have no clothes, how we reach out to those who are mourning and suffering. These are all acts of mercy. And Jesus then says, Know that whatever, you good, whatever good you do to any soul, I accept it as if it had been done to me. We hear this beautiful parable of the Good Samaritan today. Jesus showing what mercy looks like. Not because you're a friend. In fact, Jews and Samaritans were enemies. And he says, this is the one who is neighbor. Who, who was the neighbor to the robber's victim? The one who treated him with mercy. So for us to receive God's mercy and not his judgment, we must be merciful. And while we may not be able to go out and feed all the hungry out there or put a roof over the head of everyone who is homeless, we can pray for them. We can recognize their good, their dignity. We can offer them the good things of Almighty God. And I think about also the fact that it doesn't just mean giving them everything they want. Sometimes mercy means admonishing sinners. That is one of the spiritual works of mercy, admonishing sinners. And St. Paul is doing that throughout the letter to the Galatians and especially today. Saying, turn back to the Lord, turn back to the Lord, turn back to the Lord. Receive the gospel, cling to the gospel. So let us ask Almighty God for the grace to be able to be merciful in deed, in word, and in prayer, so that we may not receive judgment, but receive God's mercy.